There is good work uh, being done already uh, in our state as well. In January, I convened a Sandy Hook Advisory Commission to make specific recommendations in the areas of school safety, mental health, and gun violence prevention. The General Assembly also convened a bipartisan task force to look at, the, at many of the same issues. But even as those good efforts continue, and despite the strong leadership and goodwill in Connecticut's uh, House and Senate, we run, we run the uh, risk of letting the critical moment uh, in our history pass. None of us want that to happen, and none of us should let it happen. Connecticut, uh, too, therefore, must change. Today, in a letter to Connecticut's legislators, I outlined a plan for common sense gun violence prevention, and I, be I believe can serve as a critical first step in our efforts to make Connecticut safer. We, we can do... We can do it by answering some simple questions. Questions like, why is the gun used uh, at Sandy Hook not classified as an assault weapon under today's Connecticut law? Why are background checks required when someone buys a gun in a store, but not when they buy it privately or at a gun show? Why is there no limit on the size of magazine, uh, magazines that can be used in semi-automatic weapons? Uh, these are questions we can answer now. While some problems are more complicated and require further study, including the intersection of mental health and gun ownership, there are clear common sense steps that we can take right now to improve Connecticut's gun laws. I believe we need to enhance and expand our system of background checks so that whether you buy a gun from a dealer, a private individual, or at a gun show, you must go through a background check before anyone hands you a firearm. We need to expand the permitting process to cover more guns and keep guns away from people who have been convicted of violent crimes or making violent threats. And we must track the sale of ammunition as well as firearms. We need to ban large capacity magazines and allow the sale of only of magazines that hold 10 rounds or less. We need to strengthen our assault weapons ban. Uh, we have, a, we have a decent laws on the books today, but that law didn't prevent the sale of an AR-15. I am proposing that we change the definition of an assault weapon to any semi-automatic that has at least one military characteristic and ban the sale of these weapons in our state. We need to expand laws around gun stores so that these weapons don't fall into the hands of people who should not have them. Gun, gun owners have a responsibility to store, to store their weapons safely, and they should be held accountable if a person is injured because they were improperly stored. And we need to increase the responsibility of those involved in the sale and use of guns. The fact is that if you sell guns or work at a gun range and you see or know of illegal activity involving a firearm or banned magazine, you have a responsibility to tell someone in law enforcement. If you see someone illegally using a banned weapon or a magazine, you have an obligation to do something about that. There's more we can and should do, which is why I'm also asking uh, the commission I put together to study some important things. Things like uh, what changes we should consider uh, to mandatory reporting laws regarding behavioral and mental health, uh, and whether there are additional gun storage requirements that should be mandated by law. These are tough questions, and I hope that my commission and the General Assembly's bipartisan task force will both consider those uh, and other important potential reforms. But I hope that the steps I'm outlining today can frame the discussion about how we can start moving right now in a very real and fundamental way towards uh, more meaningful gun violence prevention laws. Finally, let me be very clear. I have a great deal of respect and belief in our Second Amendment. We have a fundamental right uh, to bear arms in this country, but with every right comes responsibility. These proposals endorse reasonable measures to improve public safety while preserving a citizen's constitutional rights. Shootings like uh, this are becoming all too common uh, occurrences in our country, and that must change. While the tragedy at Sandy Hook provided a devastating reminder of the need for more sensible policy, the problem of gun violence is not confined confined to one community. Communities throughout our state, particularly in our largest cities, continue to suffer from the scourge of gun violence regularly. The time to act on that is now. The Sandy Hook tragedy happened in a school, but we don't want the next time to have it happen in a movie theater, or a shopping mall, or a ball game, 
or on a street corner, for that matter, in any one of Connecticut's cities or towns. While there are limits to what, we, that what can be done, we don't want to be there the next time something happened that we could otherwise have prevented. The thousands of people who came to Hartford last week to push for stronger gun violence prevention laws came with one underlining, underlined message. We need a vote. I can think of no better way to honor those that we've lost than to use the lessons learned and to have a vote on a bill that will make our state and our country safer. Thank you. Let me, uh, thank you. Let me welcome uh, two distinguished public servants uh, in their own right who have had uh, distinguished uh, careers before entering the Senate and now are representing uh, our state so wonderfully uh, and magnificently uh, in all that uh, needs to be done and particularly in helping lead our country in this discussion. Senators. Thank you.